Hey guys, and welcome back. I have what should be a fun little project here today. I purchased not one, not two, but three of these Supermicro 45 Bay JBOD enclosures. These are one of the most sought after disc shelves for home lab use, and I got them for what I feel was a crazy good price. These are model number SC847E26-RJBOD1, I think it was. Uh, they are missing the trays, unfortunately, but that's okay. I have plenty of trays to get started, and you can pick up the trays for about a dollar a piece these days if you're buying them in bulk. The plan here is I'm going to move the massive uh, disc array I have. It's approximately 100 to 105 drives. Uh, believe it or not, I actually lost track of the exact amount, uh, but I'm going to move all of those drives into these disc shelves. They're currently in three uh, 836 cases and one 846 case. I'm going to keep one of the 836s for the actual computer, and then all of the drives are going to go in these 847 enclosures. These are actually JBOD enclosures, so there's no motherboards. Now, I had modified some of the older 836s I had to fit more drives inside the case, and uh, that's, that was particularly due to the expense of disc shelves and components several years ago versus where we are now. The plan for this video is I'll show you what these cases came with. I'll show you my current cases and why I'm moving away from some of those modified designs. I'm gonna do a little bit of power testing, see what kind of power consumption these idle at versus the old cases, uh, and then show you how I'm going to set these up moving forward. These enclosures are for you in rack height units. They fit 24 drives on the front. All of these cases do have the inner rails attached, but of course the outer rails are missing. When companies decommission these servers, they typically pull them out of the rack and just send them straight for recycling. They don't collect the rails or all the components they come with, unfortunately. On the rear of the enclosure, we have 21 additional drive bays. We have redundant power supplies. This did come with one power supply, and that power supply is an 80 plus gold, capable of 1100 watts at 120 volts or 1400 watts at 240 volts. And then we have four SFF8088 connectors there for connecting your drives to your RAID controller. Taking a look inside at the front of the enclosure first, we have seven 80 millimeter fans. These are standard Supermicro fans. They are NIDAC Ultra Flow, 12 volt at 600 milliamps each. The front back plane is an SAS2-846 EL2. The EL2 version has two built-in SAS expanders. It's got six SAS ports. So these first three are the primary SAS ports. And then these uh, last three here are the secondary SAS ports. Having two SAS expanders allows for failover and this also supports multipathing. We can see off the rear 8088 connectors, uh, one is going into the primary side and one is going into the secondary side. We then have two Supermicro SAS cables, SFF 8087s coming off the primary and the secondary. Those are going to the rear back plane. This will be our power supply and our PDU. The cables that come off of those go down to this JBOD board. It is part number CSE-PTJBOD-CB2. So this is basically replacing the motherboard for controlling that power supply. Taking a look at the rear back plane, this is model number SAS2-847EL2. Again, the EL2 meaning it has two SAS expanders. So these two connectors are the primary and these two connectors are the secondary. So you would connect your RAID controller to two of these. It would go into the front expander, then into the rear expander, and then it would go back out to the second, third, fourth, however many of these cases you have cascaded together. Most of the power is down there on the right. There's really not too much else to see in here. So this is designed to operate again as a JBOD or just a bunch of disks, a JBOD shelf. One thing I wanna demonstrate is how loud this is at the stock configuration and how much power it consumes at idle. So I've got a kilowatt power meter here on the wall. And I have a little sound meter app here I'm going to be referencing throughout this demonstration. We're sitting about 71 dBs, about two feet away from the enclosure. It does quiet down after it starts up about 30 seconds or so later. But uh, that is still way too loud, even putting it in a separate room to have in your own house. And we are sitting right at 107 watts of idle. So I've pulled out all of the fans. We're gonna plug this in again and see what it idles at without the fans. Without the fans installed, we're idling at 70 watts. So that means 37 watts alone is being used just for those fans. There's some things we can do to reduce that fan noise. And uh, one of those things I'm going to try, taking out these three fans, just using four fans and using a quieter fan, uh, still a fan designed for server use because we need that high, high pressure airflow throughout this case. Uh, so I have a different enclosure here and this one I've sort of made some changes on already. 
So you see I removed that second fan grid and I also removed the fan holder for these four first 80 millimeter fans. Uh, additionally, I changed up the SAS cabling. Uh, so two of the external connectors go directly into the front back plane here on the primary channel. And then I've got a third connector that comes out and goes into the rear back plane. So that's going to allow me to connect all 45 drives on one SAS cable and then have a second external SAS cable available to stack additional cases. On the first fan wall that I removed, I installed four fans. These fans are from Supermicro servers. I think they're from the 3Us or maybe even the 2Us. They are 12 volts and uh, 0.35 amps or 350 milliamps. They are from Sun Ace 80. So because they didn't fit in the original caddies, they are just a hair in thickness smaller. I ended up drilling four holes and mounting them directly to the fan wall. Now, they don't need to be in those caddies. It just makes it uh, more difficult to change them, obviously, if I have to change one. But this entire mechanism does sit on rubber grommets, both on the top and the bottom here. So vibration is not a concern. This server is pretty dirty, and that's unusual for something that's in a data center. It's typically clean. All right, let's give that a go and see how quiet it is now. That's the sound once they've started up and they've ramped down to their idle speed. About 58 dBs. And as you can see, they are still moving a significant amount of air. And with that change, we're sitting at 84 watts idle and that is significantly lower than what we were seeing before. Now, one thing I do wanna test uh, quickly here is seeing what the idle power is of a smaller wattage power supply. So the power supply in the bottom is the original 1100 watt power supply. The power supply in the top is an 800 watt power supply. And here we go. All right, so with that smaller power supply, we're actually at 98 watts. I think we were at 82 or 84. Uh, so that's, that's quite an increase in wattage for a smaller power supply. Now, the original is 80 plus gold certified and this Ablecom one doesn't have any sort of certification. So I assume this one's actually more efficient. I'm pretty sure Supermicro does have a platinum power supply. Maybe I need to pick one of those up and compare that. But uh, for the time being, we will stick with this 80 plus gold for sure. So I have on this rack where I want these four cases to sit. So this will be case three. This will be case two and this will be case one. And then I've got three U's above it, which will be the 836, which is housing the main computer. All right, even empty, they're still pretty heavy, but I managed to get it in. Uh, super micro rails are not the best. All I need to connect this is one SFF8088 cable and a power cord. Here goes the power and I shut off the light so we can see the LEDs. And one by one, the drives are coming online. Pretty darn cool. All 24 of these drives are mounted and back online. Uh, it's gonna take me a little while to get the remaining drives sorted out, relabeled and renumbered. Um, I have four more here to go in the rear. I will plan to put the SAS drives in the front. Uh, I'm gonna stick to mostly SATA drives in the back until I run out of space on one side or the other. Um, and then I'm also going to use the caddies with the black tabs as the SATA drives and all the SAS drives will have the red tabs. It should be an easy way to distinguish one from the other. So here's a quick rundown of the modified cases I've been using. As you can probably see, I removed the original power supply caddy. I installed a standard ATX power supply. This is a 500 watt, I believe it was, bronze rated. Um, I have a SAS expander down in here. And then I had made room a little bracket thing for eight hard drives going across the case. Uh, so the three cooling fans over here are pulling air through the front, cooling those 16 drives, then blowing that air over these eight, cooling those eight drives and exhausting it out the back. Now, a lot of people did tell me from the start that this would be difficult to service when a drive fails, and I kind of disagreed with them. Uh, I haven't had a single one of these internal drives fail out of all 105 or so. However, I have been removing and reordering some of these drives, in particular to sell off the lower capacity. So I've sold all of the 10 terabytes at this point. I've sold a chunk of the 12 terabytes. And each time I do that, I have to pull out the entire case. Additionally, these little fans here, this is a 50 millimeter fan I was using to cool the heat sink on this expander. These fans constantly fail. You can see the bearing in this one's just shot. It hardly turns. 
Uh, the label is loose on here because I did try to oil it at one point. So this, this worked when times were tough and the price of these cases was three to four times what they are currently. While I have this case on the bench, I want to compare the idle power of this case versus the new CSC 847. So I have all of these hard drives unplugged. The only things plugged in are the two SAS expanders and the fans. Remember the new 847 was consuming about 82 or so watts at idle. And here we're sitting at approximately 28 watts. So those new cases are consuming quite a bit more power here. And I would assume a lot of that power is being consumed by the back planes in those new cases because remember they each had two SAS expanders. So there's a total of four SAS expanders there, whereas here we only have one SAS expander. This back plane doesn't have any SAS expanders. This is a TQ model, which means it only has SATA ports. There are no SAS ports and there's no built-in SAS expander here. Now do keep in mind that this enclosure holds 24 drives and the new enclosure holds 45 drives. So that's about twice as many drives as this enclosure. So if we multiply that 28 watts by two, we have 56 watts. So really what we're comparing is 56 watts to 82 watts. And at that point, it doesn't seem like that much of a difference. All right, so the first case has 45 drives. It is completely filled. The second case has 32 drives so far. I've got about 10 more or so here waiting for caddies, so I'll be near full capacity with the first two cases by the time this is said and done. All in all, they've been running for a total of four days so far. I've been watching temperatures and noise levels. I did make a change to the fan configuration just to get some more air moving. These are the original fans I pulled out. They are part number 0126L4. They are rated for 7,000 RPMs, approximately 72 CFMs, and a static pressure of 1.09 inches of water. Supermicro has a very detailed page for comparing fan options, and there's really nothing that runs quieter and generates the same amount of static pressure as this original fan does. I ended up going with part number 0074L4, which is a drop-in replacement for 0126L4. This model runs at 5,000 RPMs, pushes near the same volume of air, and generates a static pressure of 0.53 inches of water. It is a drop-in replacement for the original fan, half the pressure but significantly quieter. Now, that fan sells for about $28 if you buy them, $28 per fan. And what I've actually found is that same exact fan is used in a number of Dell Optiplex desktop computers. It's the same fan with the same specifications, a near exact match to the model number. It's just the Dell variant instead of the Supermicro variant. That fan sells for about six bucks used on eBay if you're picking up multiples of them. That's a significant cost savings, especially when you're talking anywhere from four to seven fans per case. And those fans fit in the exact same caddies, so there's no drilling or nothing else like I did prior in this video. It's amazing what you find when you can dig a little. And after running these hard drives in these fans for a few days, the temperatures are all hovering between 35 to 40 degrees Celsius, which I am plenty happy with. Now, of course, it is winter here, so we'll have to compare temperatures once we get to summer. And, you know, this is an unconditioned space down here, so maybe it'll be a little bit warmer. But I do still expect it to run quite a bit cooler than the original modified chassis designs. Anyway, that's where I'm going to call it quits for this video. If you have any questions, comments, thoughts, or ideas, please leave them down in the comment section. Hit that like button before you go, and thanks for watching.